So this is the iPhone 15 Pro and you can see right here we have the iOS 18 developer beta 1. Now take a look at that size 7.11 gigabytes so that thing is quite hefty. You're gonna need some space on your iPhone to download this and keep in mind this is developer beta 1. Public beta 1s are available in July. You'll need an iPhone SE in second generation and later. The oldest larger screen iPhone that uses this is the iPhone 10R. So keep in mind there are some iPhones that are losing support this year. They also announced some other software today, but we're going to take a look here in this video and you're going to find out by the end um, if this is something that really excites you or not. So let's go ahead and begin with the update right here. All right, so we're now in iOS 18 and I got to say it only took about 15 minutes or so on my Wi-Fi. Depending on your Wi-Fi, it could take a little bit longer, but it's a sizable update. You can see software upgrade is complete to iOS 18. So let's go ahead and hit continue right, and then you'll click iPhone analytics. Welcome to iPhone. So it's kind of like you're going into a new iPhone. Now, first of all, let's just state something very quickly. You can see here on first glance, they didn't redesign the whole OS. It's still iOS. So if you wanted a major redesign, totally different, everything, that's not what happened. It's a polished upgrade with huge advancements to AI, which we might not see here. We might only see it on uh, in the fall. So we'll see if we can see the AI right now. I don't know if we will. Yeah. So if I hold on Siri, it doesn't look like the AI is available just yet. So first things I want to take a look at is the wallpapers and they actually added more than one this year. You have multiple different wallpapers. You have this guy right here. You have this guy right here and more. I'm going to go ahead and put this one because that's the one that looks most like the iOS 18 icon. And I just wanted to showcase that first as the first thing I always look at in my beta reviews uh, when they first come out is the wallpaper. If we go here, you'll see it says general. Let's go ahead. You can see things are looking a little bit different laid out, but not very, very different. I'm going to go into the software update and show you we're on iOS 18. And you can see here the version number for this software is iOS 18 22A 5282M. And this is just an early preview, but that's the build number of the first beta. All right. So the first feature here is going to be one of the features I've been waiting for forever. And you could probably hear the happiness in my voice. The ability to move icons wherever you want. Do you see this? It's about time we can finally put icons wherever we want on screen. No longer has to fly into that corner right there. This is going to be a game changer for those of you who've been wanting to just put icons wherever you want, whether you want them on the side. And you know what? This is exactly how I always thought Apple would do this. I always thought they would do it in a way that's like it still kind of looks clean, but like, you know, they'll still let you put it where you want, but it still kind of retains the iOS feel. And that's exactly what it does here. You still have an iOS look, but let me remove some. You still have an iOS look, but you have the ability now to put these icons wherever you so want. The next one is the ability to change the control center right from the control center. First of all, you can see it definitely has a nice redesign here. Things are looking a little more circle on the edge. They look a little bit more rounded at the edges. I quite like this, but I've always disliked how with control center you had to go back into the settings to change things. Well, not anymore. You can go ahead and add controls now right from the control center itself. And it kind of shows these little bubbles and what they do here. Um, definitely nice. So tons of utilities. You can even add different accessibility features. You can add different sounds and more motor accessibility, hearing accessibility. The list goes on. You're going to have some fun here with the control center this year for sure. So that's a nice enhancement. I also just noticed, let me go ahead and use face ID really quickly. Hold on. I also just noticed that you can actually turn the iPhone off from up here in the corner. Now you can hit the power button right there. Now I'm going to be honest with you. These features were already found in, now if I'm being honest with you, some of these features were already found in things like the Samsung phones, Android phones, but it's really nice that Apple has found their own touch and put their own take on it. You can swipe up to go to music and you could swipe down to go one more time to your connections. Also, you'll have the ability to add, you know, your home devices on here as well. So the control center, a really nice redesign for sure. I think you're really, really going to like this control center. And you'll see your connectivity settings as well. Big, easy to press things right here. That's going to be another nice touch to the control center. All right, now on the home screen, you're going to have different abilities to edit this home screen a little bit more. So we click here in the left corner, hit customize. 
At the bottom, you'll see an automatic one. So it'll automatically change these icons to darker icons. And while Apple didn't bring a totally new redesign, this is like a redesign looking icon, especially when you tweak it into the dark mode. Now it's not enabled on third party apps, but you can see definitely on some of the base apps, really nice looking right there. Although it does kind of look like a theme on Android phones, I still think that it's a nice new change. You can also enable it to always be on dark, always be on your classic light mode, or as they showed in the event, tint the icons the way you want. Now it'll automatically kind of match up with your wallpaper, but you can go ahead and change the tint color however you want. Once again, you can also make the icons large straight from the home screen itself. So if you like really big, large icons, you can go ahead and do that. But also you can make them small again. So that's quite nice as well. So a lot of customization that's going on here in iOS 18, especially to the app icons on the home screen. All right, so when I was just showing the icons here, I was able to tint them, but then there was a bug already where that wouldn't go back to the base one. So you can see already within the beta, there can be bugs. Now for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna leave it in this new dark mode right here, just so it looks kind of different. Um, this is really different and why this is important is because if you're using like a specific tint and wallpaper, your iPhone will finally look a little bit different than someone else's iPhone. And some people might look at your phone and be like, what is that if they're keeping it in the classic mode? And I would wager a lot of people are probably going to just leave it in the classic mode. But for those of you who pay attention to customization, this is definitely enhancing the experience of iOS for sure this year. This is pretty exciting if you ask me. Another neat touch in iOS 18 is finally, finally, finally history in the calculator. So click over here and we now have history. It's about time, Apple. Thank you so much for listening to us. I've been wanting this forever. I've actually been using a separate calculator forever just to do that. Now, they also mentioned Math Notes and iPadOS 18, but it's also going to be available here for the iPhone. So I'm guessing if you go ahead and just maybe write a math note with markup here. So let's try it right here. Five times five equals, let's see if it will give us that calculation. Five times five equals 25. There you go. So it's like magic right there. Let me make this a little bit deeper right here. So how about 25 times three equals 75. That's the correct math right there. Now, I could already see people are probably going to use this to cheat on their test. So don't abuse this tool. This tool is to help you um, with certain math equations, but really cool. I think that's a really powerful, neat new feature. The math notes right there. Very cool. Also, if you go here, scientific, Apple has also added the scientific section. You could see right here, it used to do it in the landscape mode. Let's get out of scientific though. But what I really, really like is that they finally have made upgrades to the calculator and especially the biggest one is history. I had to use a history based app before, but I'll no longer need that and it could clean up my phone without having to have two calculators on board. So a really, really nice update to the Apple calculator. Another thing you can do now is go ahead and hide applications. So let's say I don't want people snooping in my wallet. I'm gonna go ahead and hit require face ID. So what this is gonna do is basically lock the wallet app. So if you try to open this so on here, you will need to open face ID. So it's like two steps now to get into the wallet. While that does add some security, I think it definitely is a really good feature, especially if you don't want people snooping around into your device. Also, when you go ahead and hit edit up here, you can go ahead and just add your widgets straight from up there now. So no longer needing to go ahead and go like that. And there was like the plus sign. Now you have the two options right there. So a really, really, really great touch. Also, I forgot to mention right there, if you go ahead and do that, it'll kind of tint, turn into the dark mode right there. So pretty cool overall in the customization aspects. There's also an ability now to hide your applications from the home screen. You'll see them right here under hidden. When you do select the ones you want to hide, they will appear in this new hidden folder down here. So that's going to be nice if you want certain applications not visible. This is really great when you go out and about and you want to keep things more sensitive. 
uh, information protected. Or if you hand this off to let somebody use your phone, make a phone call, you don't want them getting in snooping around in your stuff. It's further enhancing the privacy and security of iOS. So the weather app is basically the same, doesn't really need a major update, didn't really get one. So in iOS 18, no changes to the weather besides that icon will change depending on how you tint it or customize There's it. There's now an all new passwords app. This is great because certain password applications out there actually have gotten hacked already. And just having Apple make one for their own device, I think is really, really a more trustworthy option for those of you who are really nervous to use third-party password applications. So not like they're you know stored on device passwords already. This is its own dedicated app where you can go in and grab your passwords. So this is a really nice new feature here for the iPhone. So you'll see right here, they're gonna store all the ones you already have on device and it'll say all the Wi-Fi passwords, pass keys, uh, pass keys, I said keys, keys, <laughs> security, and more. And you'll be able to add more right here. So if we hit continue, you'll wanna go ahead and add groups of passwords. Pretty cool. You can share some passwords with groups of people as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be really nice to manage them all on device. And that password application will also work across the iOS ecosystem, including on all your other Apple devices. So that's gonna be quite nice as and well. Apple Journal, which was an all new feature for last year, um, definitely has now the ability to search your journal entries, which is really, really nice. And um, you can have a state of mind now where it'll kind of give you the ability to add your state of mind when you are writing your entries. So that's kind of cool, especially if you're using this to kind of overcome some issues and stuff like that. You're journaling daily to improve mental health. That could be really helpful as well. But I personally really like the ability to search out journal entries. That was a con I was noticing with using the Apple Journal app before. So in the journal application right here, I was already journaling earlier about how I can improve my content by talking about Apple intelligence. So that's one of my journal notes I want to do. I want to navigate and discuss and share with you guys different um, videos with Apple intelligence, but you can see 11 week streak of journaling. I've written 10,000 words. I've 86 journal days. Again, you can log your mindful minutes as well. And with the search bar, you'll be able to go ahead and find specific entries. Really, really nice. I think in terms of journaling this year, they're improving this app. And this is one of my favorite new additions that came to 17. It really was good. I just want to see it on iPad now. So contacts now, you're going to have certain applications will request, do you want to let them see the contacts info or not? And you'll have the ability to go ahead and block that from happening in iOS 18. That's about it. Not a ton changing with contacts, but definitely not allowing certain apps to see your contacts is a nice security improvement to the iOS 18. So another new huge upgrade to iOS 18 comes in the form of messages. First of all, we now have RCS, which allows you to message with the you know Android devices and they should be able to see, um, you'll, you'll be able to see when they're typing and stuff like that. It's just gonna improve the overall experience later this year. So definitely our RCS compatibility is huge update for those of you texting between Android users, but Apple smartly went ahead and improved their tap back feature. So while they are allowing Android devices to work with this now with RCS, they didn't really make a big deal about it. What they did make a big deal about it, how you can use any emoji you want now as a tap back. So if you want to, let's just use something here. Let's say I wanna use this one. I can go ahead and do that. And that's pretty cool. Now here's the issue I have with this. I feel like this might not work well with certain Android devices, especially like some of these emojis that aren't available on those devices. So while they did add the RCS support, they also probably made certain things still incompatible. We'll have to see how that pans out, but it's really nice that you can use pretty much any emoji you want here now in iMessage, especially across with different iPhone users. It's a really nice new feature here with tap back. So within iMessage, you also have these new text effects, which are pretty cool. Honestly, you can format your text now with an iMessage, pretty cool um, text effects. And I think it's, um, it's really gonna make this a little bit more useful, especially if you wanna like emphasize something within your messages. So a pretty cool test right there. You can see how it jiggles and stuff like that. You can also go ahead and, you know, 
schedule for send later. Finally, you can send messages later. Also, you can schedule messages to send later now within iOS 18. So you can schedule them to be sent off at a later date. Really nice, finally here on iOS 18. Another major, major feature, and could be a life-saving feature, is their satellite messaging now. You can go ahead and send messages over the satellite feature that was found in the iPhone 15 models. I think it came in the 14 as well. You can, now if you have those, those type of iPhones, they'll be able to send you messages even when you're off the grid. That could be a life-saving feature or just a really cool feature if you're trying to reach people and you're like, hey, I'm got no signal, but you will always have signal um, to even send mess iMessages off grid. So that is huge. I think that's something that will separate you know, the choice between buying an iPhone and another phone. So there's new categorizations in mail where you'll be able to see different promotions and different um, businesses all kind of categorizing into one so you can kind of have a neat you know, feature there where it's showing all the emails just from one business, but I'm not seeing anything changed right here on my Apple Mail. It could be that we have um, nothing here for beta one. They showed it on stage, but I'm not seeing it there in Apple Mail for at least my device. So let me know if I'm doing something wrong or what, because I don't see it right there. But yeah, you are going to have an upgrade to mail and that it's going to go ahead and recategorize things in a much more neat format. So Apple Mail might be more interesting to use this year than ever before. Well, another new feature within iOS 18 is the ability to see topographic hiking trails. So you'll be able to see like navigation within that hiking trail, which is really neat. And of course, you'll see a ton of information in here about that trail, but just really a nice new touch to actually be able to navigate within your hikes. That's a really nice upgrade to Apple Maps. If you ask me, what do you guys think about that down below in the comments? So Apple Cash has Apple Cash like pay tap to pay now. So if you want to like bump your iPhone with another iPhone, you could just kind of send them cash securely without sharing any sensitive information or sending it through an app. You're just going to straight up iPhone, iPhone, bump them and they'll be able to get that cash. So that's a nice new feature, especially if you use Apple Cash. I'm not a huge Apple Cash user, but for those of you who are, you might really, really like this. Also within the Apple Wallet app, they are gonna have better event pages when you do go to events. So when you want to see events and things like that, it's gonna pop up a nicer appearance and stuff like that. So it'll also show sheet seating charts. So if you wanna see the seating chart of the event you're going to within Apple Wallet, they're gonna go ahead and have that as well on iOS 18. So that's it. So there's a new gaming mode that's gonna make your iPhone even faster than before. If you're playing games like Assassin's Creed, for example, these more console level games, this new gaming mode for iOS 18 is definitely gonna enhance the gaming experience. They didn't talk too much about it, but definitely talked about how we're gonna have enhanced performance in the game area, especially on the more graphically intensive titles. So we'll see how that operates later on. But just know that the gaming mode that was introduced last year is getting improved. So one of the best upgrades this year is definitely got to be the photo apps, the photos apps for sure. You can see right here, the new tab bar shows you months, years, of course, a little bit redesigned, but very nice. Kind of when you first come in here, it looks pretty much the same, but nothing too insane. But if you click over here, this is one of the best features here. You can filter this by screenshots, videos, photos, and edit it. But if you click the screenshots, it will just go straight to those. It can enhance your experience of the photo gallery, showing you just the more pertinent information you want to see instead of like having a cluttered looking gallery. So if you just click photos, it will just show the photos. And then, of course, they're going to have more collections and things like that where you can search out specific days, trips and stuff like that. Really nice. So you'll see your media types down there, utilities, featured photos. And then it will show you here what you were doing on specific days. So on February 8th, I was out and about taking some photos at a scenic location. And you can see it will kind of just put the photos you took from that day within that day. This is amazing, especially if you want to go ahead and keep things organized. I always thought the gallery in iOS is very cluttered, and I think they're really enhancing things here in iOS 18. So photos, major upgrade, especially for those of you who house a ton of photos on your iPhone and you can't find anything ever, or when you're looking, you just give up because it's just so far away to find. It gets so much smarter here in iOS 18. Also, you'll have the cleanup feature, which is very similar to Google's Magic Eraser within photos, where you can erase photo bombs in the background, people walking in your photos. You'll be able to remove them with AI later this year. Um, but I'm noticing when I hold down Siri, we don't have the new animation. I do see a little animation right there along the side of the screen, though, when I click Siri. But the thing is, is that iOS, you know, 17 
18, while not, while big differences here, if you have a phone that's getting iOS 18 from 17, that's not one of the A17 Pro chips, you're not going to be able to use of the AI features. So that's kind of not great for those of you out there who have anything prior to a 15 Pro or Pro Max. Even if you have a regular 15, you're not going to get the new AI features um, available. So that kind of stinks, but that's just something to note while watching this video. So I do want to talk about some of the changes they brought to the Apple intelligence, although I can't really showcase them here. So it's going to be more talking. There's Siri. There's a new Siri animation will come all the way around the screen here in the Apple intelligence. We're going to have the ability to have new gen emojis, insert your own AI based pictures and messages, summarize emails. You'll be able to enhance like your grammar across the system wide usage. So anytime you're writing something, you can on device, go ahead and fix your grammar, kind of like Grammarly, but AI version from Apple. And you'll have image one and Apple's notes app. They really enhanced iOS 18 here in the sense of like polishing it up, giving you some customization features you've been looking for. But there is one thing that still annoys me. Where is the split screen? There is no split screen still here within iOS 18. Still kind of weird. Um, also, you can search for video clips right in a moment with the AI. You'll also have ChatGBT, which will finally be integrated. Now, for those of you who don't have an iPhone 15 Pro or higher, you'll still be able to download ChatGBT straight from the App Store if you want to use OpenAI's application, but you could already do that now. You didn't have to wait for this update to do that. But if you don't have it, it's not going to be integrated within your iPhone. What's really nice about the AI coming to the iPhone, though, is that it's going to be all free. Unless you want to use a little bit more advanced features, you can subscribe to a more subscription-based version from ChatGPT, but I don't think most people are going to do that. So the system-wide stuff is kind of a useful thing. I think it's going to spur on a huge upgrade cycle here for the iPhone 16 models. Another thing to note about the Apple AI coming to the iPhone is that it's not going to be shared with Apple. It's going to be all on device and it's end-to-end -end decrypted. It's all going to be on device. So this is never going to leave the device. You'll never have your data leaking, anything like that. And so this is going to be a major advantage to using the iPhone with AI versus other devices that definitely collect some data. So that's it for me on this iOS 18 beta one review. Um, if you have an iPhone 10 R SE second gen or later, you'll be able to try out the, the iOS 18 this July. So next month, if you want to pay a hundred bucks and become a developer, develop some apps, or just review the software. You're going to have to sign up as a developer if you want to try out early builds like this. Although I don't recommend them. They drain more battery. They're way more buggy. And I just don't recommend them. You might as well just wait to get a free public beta next month in July. Overall, a lot of the AI features stuff doesn't look like it's available just yet here on the iOS. Look at that flashlight animation. That definitely looks super nice. I also forgot to mention the action button. We'll be able to remap a few more things with AI in the future, different actions and stuff like that. Safari looks generally the same. And generally, this is a polished upgrade that should just keep Apple safe, basically, in terms of staying with the industry, I feel like. Uh, definitely giving you more customization than ever. And um, if you want to know my personal opinion, I think it's a pretty exciting upgrade. But I think there's still work to be done, and I'm really excited to see how the AI integrates with the new, bigger iPhone, how that processor is going to play with this upcoming AI, and how it's all going to sync together in the ecosystem. It's an exciting time to be in the Apple ecosystem, having all this on-device integration of AI and security along with it, not collecting data, and um, having all the stuff you love about iOS already. I really like how they're improving the experience. I really do. It's it's making the device seem more worth it as it's not always about changing the overall device that's already been good, but really changing how you benefit and value from the software that's on board. Let me know your thoughts on iOS 18 down below in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informing, click the like button for me. If you want to see an iOS, uh, iPad OS 18 version of this video where we discuss iPad OS 18 or even Mac OS, watch OS, let me know if you want to see any of those. I'll consider making them if plenty of people ask for it. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. <music>